Have you ever died on your red buff due to an invade that was caused by your own support and then you had to start on the opposite side level 1 down basically a minute to the enemy jungler and then somehow you had to find a way to win the game but you didn't know how? Well fortunately for you all of the step by step to jungle difference principles that works in every single game where you're winning also works when you're losing, when you're behind and when you want to make a comeback. Essentially these jungle pathing strategies will allow you to win every single game. As you can see we went from this KDA to that KDA and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and how you can do it as well on any champion no less not only Rengar's and that's because I was simply enjoying myself getting a leash on the red buff missing the plan trick to give myself some ferocity stacks and my blitzcrank invades me with a pike look when you leave base after you've died this is where the big brain stuff kicks in because most junglers will simply go where back to their red where is the cane starting if the enemy bot lane was able to invade you and kill you where obviously he's starting on the opposite side there and he's going to be doing his classical red crux raptors maybe sequencing down maybe he tries to do some cheeky gankings. We know the Rengar's flash is down if you're the Kane, so you should look to abuse this as much as possible knowing he's gone back to base involuntarily and now 99% of junglers would just simply go to the red. So what happens is as Rengar you say listen no what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and start on the wolves. Now why would I do this? Well that's obvious because I know the Kane is basically gonna either flex into a red buff invade which he'll do because no doubt we know it's watered by the red team. They know I'm going to shovel over one and the cane will know that you're just going to be basically free food and free orbs, of course. And if you want to learn how to play the game at the highest possible level from a jungler and a laner perspective, this is the last few days where you can actually sign up for our January 30th bootcamp for myself and Coach Kyber for jungle and for lane. Everything you need to know, highly in-depth, highly interactive over two weeks, basically giga knowledge presented to you by Ghost Academy and us. Click the link below to sign up before it's too late. And remember, every session will have VOD access as well. So don't worry about being able to make the exact times we have you covered. Alternatively, he could say, listen, Rango is most likely going to the red buff. I'm going to go and steal his blue and take it away from him, deny him the experience. And you know what? If he does go to the blue side instead of the red side, I'll just kill him. So as Rango, what you want to do here is say, all right, I'm going to start on the wolves. If he invades the blue, at least I have level two and we can try and do something. Otherwise, I just want to make sure my camps are going to respawn at a sooner rate because I'm so far behind. I need that experience, that bonus experience from the camps, even if the difference between, say, level one camps, four camps and five camps, might not always be the biggest raw amount. If you add that up for each sequence and each time you take the camps, it does equal a large amount. And obviously after that, we've gone Grump Blue and now into the Top Scuttle. Because that Top Scuttle spawn, Kane hasn't shown up on our blue buff, we know he's carried on to the bottom side of the map. What we don't know is, did the Kane go to my red side first or is he just doing full clear crab and ganking bottom lane? These are the mind games and this is how we get back into the game with jungle diff mentality. Here you simply call your losses and go back to base. That's cool, we got four camps, 16 CS, can buy a couple of long swords with the first strike rune set and off we go to the bottom side. Now at this stage, it's a little bit coin flip because Pike's been moving in and out of the lane. You're not sure what is and isn't warded. Maybe it's safer just to go for the Krugs. That was my decision and honestly, maybe a little too safe. With two long swords, I should have just tried to do the red and guess what? I would have found the cane there and probably should have killed him. And this is what I'm going to call the tilt phase of unacceptance. This is where you try your hardest to get back into the game, but you're still very, very tilted and your player's unholy compromised. You can see this. We probably kill the cane with a hard core root, but instead we go for the greedy empowered savagery. Just thinking maybe I can't kill him. I will will it so. Unfortunately, the game doesn't thrive on will, but we are able to burn the cane's flash. We will note then once we've finished that red buff zone, or at least, you know, watching it be killed, go to the Raptors, they're also gone. So what do we do now, my friends? Well, we know the cane by pressing tab had 28 for full clip plus grab. He had my red 32 and he had the Raptors 36. That is a very early 20 CS lead. And you know what? You can still kick his ass with jungle difference perthing. So you know he's going to leave the base and most likely go for his Krugs. You don't have to scam because you know the mid laner didn't leave lane. You know the jungler's on the bottom side. So you know the top side of the map is not warded. We can track this by simply staring at our information processing unit, otherwise known as the mini map. So you are enjoying yourself some casual Raptor snacking and the cane shows up at a base going straight to his Raptors. Why? I couldn't tell you because if he's sequencing up, that's silly. And if he's sequencing down, then you should start on the Krugs. Unexpected, annoying. So what do you do? You allow the tilt factor to once again influence you and you simply try and fight it out and you die. But as you see this, remember that we're going to be doing this later in the video and of course the game. So don't worry, revenge is coming. You also notice how everyone on your team and the enemy team starts chasing each other around. This is perfect for junglers in the scenario. Simply fall back, take your grump, take your wolves, don't get into unnecessary fights. Don't take fights whereby even if you maybe get a kill, you die again. Well, you know, you're going to have to do that, but not right now. We can then fall back down to the respawn of our Raptors, which of course will be at that juicy level five level. Then we can go down to our Krugs 
and the RNG scuttle on the bottom side, knowing full well that the Kane's HP is compromised and will be distracted by the respawning of his rebuff and of course the respawn Krugs. This gives you time to make sure you can control your own jungle again, regaining control of your own jungle. That is basically step one of this whole facade. The facade is that he thinks you are weaker and losing when in reality you're actually hunting him. So once we've done that and the Kane finishes his red, he will most likely now sequence down. He will not have the respawn timing of his raptors perfectly in sync because we stole those away. Again, minus four for him, plus four for us. That's an eight point swing. This is where you have to now turn it up a little bit. At this point now, we have to become the aggressor. We're going to try and kill the Kane, steal his ground. We can't do that. We float around the top side. We know their bottom lane is going to be showing up as well. We're not quite level six. So this makes this play definitely more aggressive. But I kind of like forcing this issue when you don't exactly have the lead because it's unexpected from the enemy jungler's perspective. Hey, why is he doing this? What does he have that I don't know? Although typically it's a case of what's this idiot doing and you kill him. But you know, if that's the case, that's the case. And so what you have to kind of do is, you know, this whole manifestation thing's a little bit weird, but you want to imagine that we're going to be doing something like this later in the game. How can I get from here to there? And you keep that in your mind with every decision you make, no matter how badly it might turn out. However, we are Rengar, thus we have two bone tooth stacks. We can go back to base, we get a serrated dirk. We have two long swords. And now we're gonna basically say, listen, Nothing on the bottom side because I'm basically sequencing top to bottom. Let me go and snack the blue side and get six as soon as possible. However, Kane is basically going on the default notion that the enemy Rengar is going to go to his red again, not tracking the down sequencing. And if you're like, well, wait a second, don't, you know, normally high elo, diamond plus players or so on, think about those things? Yeah, no, I just released on my coaching channel a Kha'Zix vs Echo where both of them didn't track their sequencing direction and didn't track their number CSing. And this kind of stuff is what keeps you from going to master if you are someone who is diamond. If you are someone who is gold and platinum and you want to get to diamond and eventually master tier, this simple stuff will simply allow you to win very, very easily because, hey, free raptors, free Krugs. We have the timers, we know the rub. Now, obviously, mechanics are important. And the rage of how this game is unfolding should not make you feel compromised and lazy like this, where you walk into vision of a damn minion so the Mordecai can hold you and kill you. Don't do those things. But again, given that we're going to be doing this, it's all part of the process. Right, now we're annoyed. That's it, angry Rengar time. Let's go. We see him taking a top scuttle. Nothing for free anymore. Smite that sucker. Kane's gonna go mid lane and get some kills. Don't care. Take your wolves, take your grub. Go back to the bottom side. Small spaghetti pathing event instead of just going direct, but hey, it was worth sending a message. The idea is to take whatever camps are up and play around our ultimate, but if something is happening bottom lane, finally something will happen because their bottom lane has a huge, huge lead. Finish off your red to make your bottom lane think you've just about ditched them, then you hop over the wall very, very slowly for some strange reason, flash into the bush, kill the pike, ult to chase down the djinn, make sure you use those quick feet to avoid the root, and then kill him. What's on the map? Oh right, a dragon. Take the dragon. Oh, and by the way, due to the cane being counter jungled by you multiple times, and due to all of this waffling and his own untimely demise because he relaxed and thought he was winning. Yeah, I caught up on CS, you see, because you think, oh, look, look at the KDA 04. Yeah, but we caught up a 20 CS gap. That's meaningful. And shutdowns. And objective. Now we need to turn it up because the cane is dealing with the one lane that does have pressure, the top lane Yorick. So we just poke the Jin out, we hit the plant, and then we shadow, we kill the ward, and then of course there's nothing else for us to do because our sequencing is pretty efficient. But remember, at this stage we have a lot of unspent gold, so you don't overcommit too much. We simply move into the bush knowing the bottom lanes will not be able to help themselves in terms of over pushing. Every assassin jungler knows this. So we basically do the exact same process, kill the pike, ult, and kill the Jin. Not the cleanest at all, but then again, I haven't played Rengar in about a year or so, so excuse me. But at the same time, you've got like muscle memories when you have so many points in a champion. Even if you're really rusty and everything's slow and clunky, you can still win a lot of games if you have them in your main champion pool, to which I made a video talking exactly about this. I will link it below for you. At this point, the Kane is now obviously getting fed on the Yorick. He's taking all of your stuff. He has the ability to fall back to the Herald as well as the mid lane, but Mordecai is over committing. So make sure you steal that kill. Take it. Whatever it's worth, take it. We need to start getting fed. Now we've sequenced on down again. What do we want? Level 11. When do we want it? As soon as possible. Kane wants the Herald. Let him have it. Kill the bottom lane again. Now this might not be the bottom lane in your games. It might be the top lane at roaming. It might be the mid lane. It doesn't matter. Someone will be here on this pushed up wave. Kill them. Go ahead and take their jungle because you know the Kane is focusing on an objective. And that's the whole thing. If someone who's ahead gets complacent, takes all the time in the world to take heralds, objectives, look for pigs, and you can steal their camps as well as get your own because you've now taken control of your jungle since like the fourth minute. And sure, the Kane has been able to get some more camps, been able to push up waves and CSs and whole towers, which has given him that false advantage. But what I'm going to do here is Rengar that the Kane didn't do, even if it looks like, you know, a 45 year old retired basketball player trying to dunk. I got old, excuse me. I'm going to stay in the fights here because the Kane is so focusing on himself and obviously on his own resources, he didn't realize that he had the lead and the ability to carry this game. 
Now again, the Mordekaiser is dead, the Jin ult is burned. They're going mid lane to try and kill people who really don't matter. The Rengar was in this area, picked up some honey fruit and is going to rotate and kill the cane and get that shutdown. Huge. And of course, as you can see, that was done using patience, right? We didn't just jump into the pike and everyone. We let them do their business. We sat on the bush. We waited. As soon as someone slices himself up from the group, now you hunt. Basic predatorial stuff, really. Then because the Rengar was low when the Ross went to go kill him, the pike thinks <laughs> free kills, right? Rengar says, yeah, but no, I'm I'm level 12 and I have Duskblade, you die. Oh, what's that, Jin? You're overcommitting on the bottom lane, now down two levels, and I still have a lot of gold, but I don't care, I'm gonna send a message. I'm ulting, I'm killing you again. Do you see how this has flowed and how this has changed? Because what's happened is, simply by controlling your own jungle and reading the enemy jungle, and sure, we died a few times for those reads because of the randomness, but the decisions were sound, the resources we gained were huge, we got the shutdowns, we played equal and opposite, and now we're fed enough that we can win fights 1v1, 2v2, 3v1, 1v5. We can do it. You have to be able to reach this phase of the game as your strongest self, even if you had a shitty beginning. Because if you do, the positioning elements of the enemy team will never be perfect, especially at this point. Doesn't matter the elo you're playing, challenger, grandmaster, master, diamond, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, iron, whatever. People will step out, and if your champion allows you to kill them, and you can say, well, I'm not playing Rengar, okay, Evelyn, Hazix, Lee Sin, Kane, Bolivar can do this, Udyu can just run it to Jin and kill him over and over again as well. Most junglers, 90% of junglers can make these kinds of plays. Rengar just feels and looks the best doing it. Now the Kane feels like he needs to elevate the game state further, uses the Herald on the bottom lane, he over pushes because now he feels desperate, which is perfect, that's what I wanted him to feel. After that, now we go looking for some fun. If you're a split pusher, you can definitely split push and push the waves up, I do recommend you do that maybe in a more classical sense, but as you see the pike get insta deleted, the grump gets snacked and then the split push conducted, with assassins it can kind of happen a separate way around because you want to be able to kill them first when they're out of position, then we can fall back, push up the map and then repeat the process, consistently keeping numbers advantage. And what happens from the pressure that the Rengar or myself has exerted is that the Jin is now too afraid to kind of push up too much, but because the bottom wave was pushed up, someone will always look to grab it. We have someone split pushing on the top lane as well. For them, a 1-3-1 is the worst thing possible. Mord is trying to kill in the mid lane because there's nothing else for him to do, so punish their positioning. Kill the pike. Mord tries to alter Rengar and you say, you know you can't do that, you press the magic button. W cleanse. Jin tries to rotate over and you're like, yeah, no, what are you doing, buddy? And you kill him as well. The consistent mispositioning of enemy teams versus assassins or someone who's now snowballed and caught up, this is exactly what you're looking for. No hesitation. As soon as someone is out of position, you kill them, you punish them, you push away if you take the tower. Every single time. If you hesitate and you don't know you can do this, you will allow them time to set their feet and make a good play. Never allow them to set their feet. That's the jungle difference rule. Push the towers, try not to overstay, but if you do, at least take one sucker with you. That's also a rule, I think. I'm gonna put it in as a rule because it makes me look better. Instead of, hey, you overstayed, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? Aren't you a coach? I know those things. I yell at myself, don't worry. But also towers. So we finished our infinity edge in one buy and we see the cane and everyone, you know, from our team dying over our red buff. And we say, yeah, let's clean that up. So we kill the Rost. Then Cassio tries to kill us, which turns a little bit close actually, but you go back into the bush and you use the bush play, you kill her as well. Jin kills someone, tries to gale force him thinking he can kill you, but he forgets. Again, great HP, W, huge ability. Pike tries to hook you, you avoid the ultimate because he's kind of slow with it. What you should do is kind of run away, but uh, you can also try and ego the Pike kill and then die to the Mordekaiser. Don't recommend it, but it's a thing you can do. Again, it's all about the message. Okay, great, now we have a BF sword from that, so again, worth. And because we are level 15, look to get that 16 ASAP before the next fight to get the bonuses of your ultimate, whatever those stats might be. Damage, cooldowns, depends on your champion. All of this stuff, you're worrying about the macro of the map. There is no macro of the map. The Rengar contorts the entire game to what he chooses to do. Someone splits, they die. They cannot set their feet. They don't know what to do because the Jin knows if he pushes up, he's dead. Ross pushes up for the dragon setup, He's dead. And that's how you win team fights as an assassin. I've made a whole assassin video. I'll link that below as well. People's tunnel vision is what loses them games. ADCs, junglers, mages, doesn't matter the class or the role or the rank. Their tunnel vision costs them wins every game. Push up the map. All right, we won the fight. Why didn't you guys go ahead and push that tower down? I'm gonna go and snack that dragon. And now if you're really fat and you don't have much to buy, it's always a good idea to kind of set a trap. Hopefully it's not warded. Use your scanners and so on. Be aware that if you do this and they all see you and they go for the Baron, that could be a counterplay, but obviously in this case, now because we took the inhib, we have deep vision, we know they're not there, we can see where they are, and we make another kill, and we push up another wave. And after going back to base without dying whatsoever, and basically making the best macro play possible in this regard, we are now going to respawn in a season 8 Game of Thrones moment for the Rengar game here that I thought, hey, this is going to be a banger pentakill finish. No, my team actually does stuff, and they win without me, 
and then we just win the game. I mean, come on, really? The whole game, you have to 1v9, mid and bottle just straight losing, Blitzcrank into you, you have to fight all the way back, ego every play, just for them not to need you to close out the game because the enemy team overcommitted and didn't use their leads. And there you have it, how to basically be the jungle diff. If you're ahead, you will win the game with the same mentality. If you are behind, hopefully you can see how the smart pathing allows you to absolutely catch up and still dominate games. But remember, the punishing of positioning through advanced and quick trigger pulls Onto those kills and fights is the thing that prevents the enemy team from being able to use their lead and close games out. If however your champion is much more of a farmer and alter, not something that's going to be doing this, then you want to check out this video that explains how any single jungler in the game can become a farming jungler with 10 CS a minute.